cross-platform support for our automation framework development with Selenium C# Sharp Advanced Cores. So, as we know, with the beginning of the season two, we are introducing so many new upgrades for our existing framework, and this is one of the most important and requested feature by most of our students, asking how can we run our test in Mac operating system, Windows operating system, and Linux operating system at the same time. Well, I don't really have a Linux machine at least at this point. I actually am going to show how to run our test on Mac operating system and Windows operating system. So that's really, really cool. We are going to run our existing code on Mac and Windows together. So let's get started. Finally, it's time to extend our framework to run on multiple different platforms as well. So we are going to modify our framework to run on Mac OS as well as in the Windows operating system. So what are the changes we are going to do then? Well, we are going to make few or maybe no code change to make test running on Mac operating system. I say no code change is because there is not a very great logical changes in our code. At least here and there, there are some path changes because Chrome driver may be sitting in different path or maybe the extent reporting can be sitting in different path. So you need to just modify those areas so that the code can start working even in Mac operating system. So the changes are going to be something like this. So this is our current code structure that we have. So we have our framework and we have our EA employee test. So this is the consuming project that we have. And the EA out of framework is the framework which is going to be used across any application that you build. So I've been seeing a lot of people are using this framework for their own companies and they are extending the EA out of framework to run for their projects. So if there is a situation where you need to execute this test within Mac operating system, you can do that by modifying the code change. So we are going to call our EA employee test as a cross-platform EA test, something like this, where you're gonna support the test to run on Mac and Windows, but the only literal change that you can see is name, but not just that, but also the project type. As you can see, the current project type that we have is a test project template, whereas this one is actually a class library project template. So EA out of framework, as you can see here, is a class library project template, but the EA employee test is a test project template. So this is not supported by Mac operating systems or Visual Studio for Mac. So for that reason, we have to convert our code to be something like this. So we are going to modify that so that we can run the test on Mac as well. That's the only change that we're going to do, basically a template change. So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to our Visual Studio. All right, so as that said, we currently are using the test template project. So as you can see, there is a uh, kind of window and there is a beaker here, which is kind of a test project template. Uh, so if you see the properties here, it still says it is a class library project. There is nothing called a test template project, but this is basically coming from a test template project. If you remember, this is what we did while we created this particular uh, course, while we created this particular project in this course. So what I'm going to do is this cross platform EA test project. So let's create a new project. And this time, instead of choosing what is called as a test template that we did before, this one, Windows Desktop, Class Library Project, and here, Cross Platform EA Project. And then I'm gonna hit OK. So that's gonna add a new project for us. And then I'm quickly going to delete this class file because we don't really require them. And then I'm just going to copy paste all these cores that we require over there. So I'm just going to drag and drop it over here. So basically it's a uh, copy pasting there. All right. It's all good now. So we have all this particular code, but not that yet. If you see, uh, we have to add a series of references, right? So for that, I'm going to uh, hit this manage NuGet package. And then I'm going to install uh, Selenium. Oops, not Selenium support because we're not supporting that at all. We're not going to use page update model concept that we were using before. And then we need extent report. So I'm going to add that as well. And we need spec flow, I guess.
I guess we have added all the dependencies now. Uh, so if I go to the uh, unit test here and let me try to build this particular project. So we'll get some series of error because we also have to uh, add this particular EA out of framework dependency. So I'm going to again add uh, reference and then EA out of framework. So I'm going to add that. And now if I try to build this particular project, so we'll again get some kind of errors here. So I guess spec flow has to be upgraded. So if I go to the reference, manage new get package, right? Seems like there is an update uh, for spec flow. So I'm going to update that. Cool. Everything's updated right now. So if I again try to build this particular project, there are some other references here, uh, right? Let's see one by one there. And let me delete these two feature files because these are creating uh, the problem here. And also I need to add the reference for the end unit because end unit is also important. So manage new get package and then I'm going to search for end unit. All right, let's add that. Hit OK. So now it seems like everything is mapped and the feature file has also been created. So the old code has been gone. The old references uh, have been gone. And there we go. So we don't really require this particular uh, traditional test anymore. So we have been uh, keeping this traditional test folder for a long time. So it's high time for us to delete it so that we have uh, less errors and we are not going to really use that anymore. All right, seems like the build got succeeded here. And we can slowly now remove this particular EA test because we don't really require this guy anymore. I'm going to remove that. And also I'm going to remove this guy from our folder structure here. So we are going to only use the EA uh, test project, which actually has our core library and the cross platform. So this EA uh, employee test is now officially dead for us. All right, there we go. So we have modified everything in here, but just that we have to make sure that all our namespaces names are actually correct. So you can see it's all EA employee test, but we have to rename that to a cross platform EA test, something like that. So I'm just going to do a control shift F, which is going to be like a global find and replace. So we are going to replace that name to cross platform EA test. So it's going to cross platform EA test and replace. So you can see that it's going to start replacing that replace all. All right. It's got replaced here everywhere. And now if I try to build the complete solution, the build got succeeded, right? And now if I try to run this test, my test should run without any problem. So I'm going to run all of them, run them. And I also need to see the report, which is going to be generated using extent reporting. All right. Seems like the test is running. There we go. The test got executed. So now if I see the uh, reports, so if I just refresh this, you can see that we have three reports here. One is employee and one more is login. So we can also see uh, the dashboard here. There you go. So it has executed three scenarios, 27 steps. So there's a start and end time. So it's less than 27 seconds. All the test got executed, which is really cool. So the extent report is working and all our tests are running fine without any problem. Now our project is also ready to run on the Mac operating system. So we are going to move all of our code into Mac operating system. And I will quickly show you how our code is going to run on Mac OS so that we can see how the cross platform actually works. So see you in our Mac operating system then. All right. So now I am in my Mac operating system and I have my uh, project here. So it's exactly our same project which we were running in our Windows operating system. So here is our EA uh, test project, pretty much exactly the same thing. I just copy pasted it in my Mac operating system and uh, it is opening the Visual Studio for us. So it has loaded here. As you can see here, uh, this is our uh, cross platform EA test project, pretty much exactly the same thing that we uh, created in our uh, Windows operating system, the same code here. And this is the same code, right? And now I am going to run this particular test in this operating system. 
which is nothing but our Mac operating system and I'm going to see how it works. So you can see that this project template is actually being recognized in the Mac operating system as well. So that's the reason why I actually converted the existing test template. That particular test template is not going to be supported uh, in here, right? So that's the one thing. And now if I try to build all, it is basically going to uh, build everything for us. Uh, but there is a code change here and there. What we have to do is this. If we see this particular code over here in the base, uh, we have this particular uh, Firefox, uh, which is nothing but the Firefox.exe that we have given it here. And there is nothing called C colon here. So make sure that you replace that to where this particular Firefox binary, binary is sitting in your Mac operating system. So you need to replace that. And similarly, uh, we're going to use the Chrome driver this time so that we can run the test without any problem. So if I could see here within our cross-platform uh, project over here within our app.config. So if I just scroll all the way here, so it's actually Chrome driver. So we don't really have any problem here. Just that this particular path that we have has to be changed. So I am going to change this particular path a little bit for the lock path, something like this. So this is the one which I was talking about while I was doing it. So I'm going to do that over here. Do that here. And similarly, this connection string is going to uh, be the same. So there is no change here. So I'm going to save it. And now if I go to the view and if I go to, oops, I also need to change the extent reporting because for the extent report, we don't really have a path here. So I'm going to replace this particular path to maybe the same location that we just pasted. So I'm going to just paste that location. So it's going to sit uh, the log. I mean, it's going to create a report for us in this location. I hope so. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to build all. So now it should build the complete project and the build got successful now. And now if I go to the view, so this is Visual Studio for Mac. So make sure you already have that. Go to the test and you can see the complete test is coming over here as well. So I'm going to again, uh, let's say run this particular check login with correct username and password. So this time it should open the Chrome driver for me. So you can see that something is really happening. It is actually launching uh, the Chrome, uh, Chrome browser for us. Oops, I also forgot to do one more thing because we don't really have uh, a Mongo server running in my uh, Mac operating system. I don't think I really have to uh, worry about the extent reporting for now. So I'm just going to go all the way to the hooks. Uh, and since it is expecting us to uh, have a Mongo DB and all those stuff. So I'm just going to come to this particular piece of code, at least for now, something like this. And I can remove this one. I'm going to save it. So this is just to prove the point that we can run the test on a, a Mac operating system. So we don't really have to worry about the historical reportings and all the stuff here, at least because we don't really have to uh, run the Mongo server because I have not installed that in my machine yet here. So I'm going to go to the test and then I'm going to run this test. So it has opened the browser. And it is running the test. As you can see, it has just executed the test here without any problem. There you go. I guess it has executed the test right now. So, but it's still uh, showing as running. Uh, that's fine. So if I go to this particular project location, I also expect the extent report generated, at least in the location that we have mentioned here. So I'm just going to copy this location. So here is a EA auto lock. So we have this uh, extent report.html file. And you can see that the extent report is also generated uh, even in the Mac operating system. So basically, everything is working fine. So we have uh, the running code on Mac operating system. I could see that the extent report is also being generated. The test is running fine. So everything is happening without any problem here as well, right? So this is exactly what I was talking about. So our code is currently being used in Mac operating system and in Windows operating system with same code base. So there is no change in anywhere in the code. And you can see that we are still using the C sharp uh, 7.1 uh, features and also it's .NET 4.7. So that's it guys. Once again, thank you very much for purchasing this course and have a great day.